Hey everyone, Jessica Gabasi here. I feel like it's been forever since I last recorded a video. So in this tutorial, this is actually a very special tutorial. I'm so excited to do this um, because I got a really cool image right now and I'm going to show you exactly how to get from this to this. So completely different. I'm going to go over here and the hair is a little funky right now. This is, this is just a mock-up. Uh, I'm going to be going more in depth and making sure that's all nice and clean and everything. So let's just get straight to it. I'm going to go ahead and use my original image here and this was taken with my beauty dish. I actually have a tutorial on how I take these images. Um, it is a studio tutorial so go ahead and check out my previous YouTube videos because you will find it there. Now I'm going to begin by first uh, selecting the hair. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the brush tool and we're actually going to stay on the same layer so we're not going to duplicate or do anything differently right now what we're going to do is press the letter Q and as you can see something happened right here it changed to a quick mask and if I just go over you're going to see that it's like a red color but you have to make sure that the opacity is to 100 percent so with your opacity at hundred percent and I'm actually going to raise the hardness right here I'm going to make it like 79 or 78 and I'm using a tablet so it's a little bit easier you can do strokes with this but you're just going to select the hair and at first I'm just gonna go over the main area but you're just gonna want to select the hair now the reason why it's coming up red is because you're actually creating a selection Okay, so now that we have the hair all selected, kind of looking like the little mermaid over here, um, we're going to just press Q again. And as you can see, it selected the thing that you just colored. So you're going to want to go to Command, Shift, and I. And we just inverted this layer. So we wanted to select the hair only. So now what we're going to do is go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then Curves. And as you can see, it selected that as a selection in the quick in the quick mask so now every time we do something it'll only affect the hair layer and again let's say you make a mistake and like over here I selected a little bit too much you can simply just go back in the layer and to erase you use black so I'm just gonna erase over there use my invisible vision I think that's pretty good I don't know why I just did that I can't even see the layer so now we are just going to do some tiny um, adjustments. So we're going to start with the RGB layer. And I'm going to just add a little bit more contrast. But not too much. I'm not going to do too much to this. And anything in curves or any other layer can always be changed later on. So don't freak out. I just want to add a little bit of color as a base. This is simply my base right now. This is not going to be the, fi the final color. But it's always good to have a base because it just helps the color look um, more natural, even if you know teal or blue is not a natural color anyways. And my favorite layer is blue. So even looks nice right now, kind of like that color. And don't worry, I know it's looking fake over here. You, we're gonna fix it, everybody. So I guess that looks pretty good. And then now what we're going to do is go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then hue and saturation. And you just want to press OK. Now before we do anything, you hold down your Alt key and then select, make sure your cursor is in the middle of both of these layers. And then you just want to click. Once you click, you're going to see an arrow and it's creating a clipping mask so that this layer is only being applied to this curves layer and then this curves layer is only being applied to this hair selection so essentially we're just making sure that this hue saturation layer only affects the hair so hopefully that's not confusing to any of you guys but this is the fun part i'm gonna select colorize and then um gonna hire up actually let me let's just lower the saturation and then now the hue you can select it to whatever color you want you can do pink purple 
Um, I am going to stick with that nice teal color and there it is right there. Now I'm just going to go back to my curves layer, my curve selection. Make sure you select this right here and I'm just going to erase and make sure it's a little bit more feathered out. Okay, and now I'm going to start on the lips. So you want to go to layer, new, and then layer. And I have a specific color that I want to use for this. And it's ED2BOB, like ED to Bob. <laughs> I don't know, I just, yes, okay, that's a nerdy joke. I should, okay, so um, you're going to want to go from normal to multiply. And the reason why is so that you can see when you're going over the lip a little easier. And we're going to keep it on that layer setting anyways. You could simply um, mask this out or do a selection, but I'm like a huge on coloring, so I'm just going to go ahead and freestyle this, I guess. Okay, so now that I kind of got the lips kind of where I want them to be, um, now what I'm going to do is add a curves layer to kind of give it a little bit more dimension on her face. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then curves. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before to the hair layer and hold down the alt key so that it only affects uh, the lips layer. So now what I'm going to do is just lower this curves layer a little and as you can see the lips are kind of changing and I'm just doing this just so it, it, it'll look a little bit more natural as you can see you can play around also if you want to change the color you can play around with that but I just want to keep it to that dark red and you could also do this next step I'm adding just a darker color and I'm simply using a black and setting the layer to soft light and just slowly, uh, softly going over the lips just to kind of blend them in, but like at 11%. So again, just using a darker, uh, the black, what am I, darker, uh, black color and just going over just an outline just to kind of give it like a dimension. Just to make them look more real, even if I'm really bad at shading and stuff. Like, people take classes on this. So there, I just kind of added like a like a nice color to complement it. And to make to give it that shadow and everything. Um, you don't have to do that, though. So that is that. And the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and enhance the eyes. So what I'm going to do is use a yellowish color. And I just made a new layer for the eyes, specifically for the eyes. And I'm going to go from normal to overlay. And I'm just going to make sure the opacity is about 55%. And it's just going to make the eyes pop a little. And I'm going to go back and lower my opacity. And with a black, not white, black color, make sure your uh, color, your foreground color is black. Just go over that around this area of the eye and if you want you can also do the bottom of the eye as well don't want to do it too much because it's going to start to look fake if you do this automatically it's going to look like just really fake I don't know just, I just don't touch that area of the eye so I'm just going to lower it just a tiny bit and it just made that color pop. You don't have to use a yellow color. You could use that same green color in her eye or whatever eye color she has. You can just kind of use that or you can use a more, more blue color. It just kind of depends what like your look you're going for. But I actually like that green tone in her eyes. Just kind of makes them pop just a little bit. So now...
So now I'm going to show you guys before and after for just the coloring of her hair and lips. So this is before and this is after. So now that we have a good foundation, we're going to go ahead and add our color. And here. Okay, whatever, and here. Here, the hair needs some love too. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start with our actual colors. So the first layer I'm going to use is layer, new adjustment layer, and then curves. And we're just going to set this to a blue color, the blue layer right here. And I'm going to hire this. I just wanted to give it like a blue tint to begin with. I really do love the blue. This this is like my favorite layer ever. I'm going to lower this to around six, uh, like 60 or 59%. Then I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then selective color. And we're just going to be using the reds. We're just going to be touching the black tab right here. And then we're going to go from reds to neutrals. And I'm just going to select the layer uh, tab right here. And I'm going to go down to black. And we're changing magenta. And then yellow. So this is just adding that little bit of contrast. And then now we are going to add, uh, I wanted this to be a little bit on the warmer side. I didn't want it to be so cool. Get it so cool. <laughs> like on the cooler side um, of colors. So we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then black and white. And what I'm going to do is just select this little tint uh, tab right here. And we're going to go from normal to overlay. And it's just going to add that nice color back in, that yellow, warmer tone color. And I actually don't want it at 100%. I'm going to go all the way down to 20. So it's really very, very slight, but it will make a difference in their overall picture. And let's say you wanted this a little bit more intense, you could always hire the opacity. I'm literally, like, I have to have it at 20%. Um, now I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then hue saturation. And then I'm going to go and lower the saturation to negative 21. And while selecting this, I'm going to go from normal to overlay. And I'm going to lower this down to 20, I don't know, like 26 even. And if you wanted a more contrasted photo, you could hire it up and even go the whole way, which looks pretty cool to me. But I'm going to lower this back. Now we're going to select a gradient map. So go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then gradient map. And this is just going to give some extra color. And I love using gradient maps. Um, these are extremely useful for colors. The one that I'm going to use is this one right here. And it goes, um, it's like a darker blue. And that's one of the first colors. And then I'm going to use a pink. And it's this color right here. And then just a regular yellow and a white at the very end. Or Actually, it's like a, yeah, it's pretty much like a white at the very end. So we're going to be using that. So I'm going to go from normal to soft light. And if we don't want this too much, this is just going to be at about 17%. And this is, again, very slightly. Now, the, the trick to coloring is doing every layer um, in smaller increments of color so that it's not overwhelming. So for instance, if I remove this layer, as you can see, it's every layer does something. So it's not like I put every layer at 100%. That's the trick to this is to do each layer um, smaller increments. And this is just my own personal thing. Again, I have to always mention that. Um, one of the last steps I'm going to do is add a gradient. And you don't have to do this step if, step if you don't want to. That blue actually looks pretty cool. This is an impromptu. <laughs> you could do this if you wanted like a, I don't know, it looks like aqua. That looks pretty cool actually. Maybe I'll just add that in. Um, <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't planned by the way. Um, so I'm actually going to use a black color and it's going to go from black to transparent. And this should be as in your default. But now you're going to go from linear to radial. And I'm going to reverse this out. So it creates a nice gradient here. So I'm going to go from normal to, let's see, I don't know. I'm going to probably just use overlay. 
And you don't have to use this step if you don't want to. It kind of just outlines the borders. It gives it like a nice look, I guess. And the last step that I'm going to use is Vibrance. So layer, new adjustment layer, and then Vibrance. And I'm going to bump up this and just to saturate just a tiny bit. Just so it'll give it like a bit more color. So um, there you have it. Actually, if you're not feeling the blue at the end, you could just take that off and it'll be exactly as it was. And this is it. This is the end of the tutorial. Now, as you can see, the hair is bothering me just a little bit. Um, that's something that you'll want to go back and fix. Let me show you guys a full before and after. So this was before and this is after. This is without that color and this is with the color which makes a huge difference. Now if you did want to fix this hair what I would do is just go back to that lips and eyes and hair um, and then go to the mask select the quick uh, select the mask right here select the white color and from here you can simply go ahead and just fix anything that you want. But what I would do is make sure that it is at a lower opacity and you're using um, a very soft brush. So meaning the hardness is at, is at about 8% or so. Before I wrapped up the hair, I made another new layer and that was directly under the hue saturation layer for that hair where we selected the hair. So it's clipped into that. And I simply used a black color and I just went over everything Opacity was at 22%. It was a very soft brush, and I kind of just went over um, with a black brush the edges of her hair just to kind of make it mesh in because it was like this before. And um, so, again, I just made a new layer and, and I just went over it with a black brush. And then it clipped into that selection we made. So, kind of useful just to kind of blend that hair in. And then you can also highlight it this way as well with the white, that white color. So, just a little tip for you guys. So I actually cleaned up the hair a little bit and then I cleaned up the lips just a tiny bit. So this is my final product. This is before and this is after. And that's one more time, before and after. So hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching.